Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I wanted to do something a bit different. Uh, something that I don't think I have seen anyone done before. I thought it would be fun to dive into the history of some of these luxury brands that we love and discover what was the first handbag created by each of these brands. So today we are going to focus on five different brands and these brands are the very well-loved brands by all of us so I think it would be fun to you know learn a little bit about the history we're not gonna go too deep into the history I'm just gonna go into a little bit of the history a little bit of the timeline of the brands and then we will go over the first handbag that was created by each of these brands I do have my little note here uh, with all the information so let's get started uh, the first brand we're gonna talk about it's one of the oldest brands in the luxury fashion and it is none other than Hermes. So Hermes is considered one of the most prestigious brands. It is also one of the oldest luxury fashion house. Hermes was found in 1837 by Thierry Hermes. He was a harness maker. The brand first started out in equestrian. In 1880, his son Charles Emile Hermes opened the flagship store in Paris at the 24 Rue du Faubourg. And today that exact location still remains the uh, flagship store of Hermes. And when he opened that store in the 1880, uh, the main focus was to make uh, saddles and harnesses. Then in 1922, uh, Charles' son, his name is Emil Etmas, he started to make leather goods. And the first handbag that was created by him was the HAC. I don't know how to pronounce the full French name, so I will put it on the screen. But the short name for it is the HAC. The name in French translates to high belt bag, which just refers to the single that latch around on top of the bag. This bag was the first ever bag created by Hermes and this bag is the original Birkin bag. So if you look at the bag, it looks almost like the Birkin. There are some key differences in this bag versus the Birkin because the Birkin did not get introduced until later on, which we will go into that in a little bit. But the HAC was originally designed to carry saddles and riding boots. It's like a very clever and functional bag that was created for riders. And then fast forward in 1981 was when the Birkin bag was sketched on the plane for Jane Birkin. And then later in 1984 was when the Birkin was officially uh, debuted. So here we have the Birkin just as a reference because I don't have the HAC. The original HAC was 32 centimeter wide and it is taller than the Birkin and it also have the longer handles. Um, the HAC comes in different sizes compared to the Birkin. The sizes for the HAC comes in the 27, 32, 40, 45, and 50. So they are generally very big bags and the Birkin comes in the size 25, 30, 35, and 40. And today's Atmas is still producing the HAC. It is harder to come by but um, generally I think um, the HAC is some Something that is more preferred by male buyers as most male buyers use this for work bag and then the larger sizes are very popular for travel or weekenders I know we're not gonna dive too deep into the history of all these brands because I think it would take us forever so that was just like a little highlight of the history of the brand and the second brand is Louis Vuitton Louis Vuitton was found by Louis Vuitton in 1854, so only a few years after Hermes. So Louis Vuitton is also one of the oldest luxury fashion house. When the brand first started out, they were only making trunk and luggages. And the first canvas ever used for Louis Vuitton trunk and luggages was the Trianon. The Trianon is a water resistant canvas and it's typically in like a gray color. And then later on they introduced the stripe canvas and I think that was in the 1876. And then in 1888 Louis Vuitton introduced another new canvas and if you guys have to guess, which one do you guys think it is? It is the Damir Eben. And then in 1892, Louis Vuitton passed away. So his son, Georges Vuitton, became the head of the luxury house. He then changed the print on their luggage. In 1896, which is four years after he took over, was when he introduced the monogram print. So the LV is obviously the initial of his father. 
and then it has uh, the different floral motifs. The first is the four point star, which symbolizes fortune. The next is a four petal flower, uh, symbolizes joy. And the last is a four point star inside a diamond, which signifies passion. So he created this print in honor of his late father. Then in 1925, Georges Vuitton introduced the very first handbag. Can you guys guess which bag that is? It is one of the bags that we today still consider one of Louis Vuitton classics. It's still being produced, very popular still. So if you guys wanna just take a second and pause the video and guess which bag that is, I will wait for you guys. Okay, did you guess? In 1930, Louis Vuitton launches the Keep All, also known as the Hold All. But this is a duffel bag, so it is for travel only and as a reaction to the faster pace of travel, later in the same year, Louis Vuitton created the smaller version of the Kipo, which is this bag. In the beginning, they call it the Express, and then later they renamed it to the Speedy. Back then, it was available in three different sizes, 30, 35, and 40. And it was later on when Audrey Hepburn requested for a smaller version of this bag, and that's when they created the size 25. And this is the size 25. So that was definitely a key moment in the history of Louis Vuitton. The Speedy was born as the first handbag from the brand. Let's talk about Chanel. So Chanel came out about 50 years after Hermes and Louis Vuitton. Chanel was found by Gabrielle Chanel in 1909. And at first when she started out the brand, she was in the hat making business. She was making hats, selling hat or headwear. In 1912, she started making sportwear. In 1920, she created the iconic Chanel Number no. 5 perfume. In 1929, she created the first handbag. However, it was like any other Others in that era, it was hand carry and it was very cumbersome. In 1939, Chanel officially shut down due to the war. And then by early 1950, Chanel was up and running again. The bag that she created in 1929, it was a hand carry bag. In February 1955, she introduced the first ever shoulder bag. So it was the bag that she created in 1929, but she created a shoulder carry version of it. And then she called it the 255 because it was created in February of 1955. And this forever changed the handbag history. And for the first time in history that it was acceptable for women to carry handbags on their shoulders. Because in that era, um, women only carry bags on the crook of the arm, handheld. So Chanel created the first ever shoulder bag and it was revolutionary. And just to put things in perspective, back in the 1955, when the bag was introduced, it was sold for $220. So the 255 feature an all chain shoulder strap and it's very meticulous, has so much details on there. It's actually one of my favorite chain from Chanel and it has the Mademoiselle lock. That name came from the fact that Coco Chanel was never married. Just a little fun fact, Coco was just her nickname. Her real name is Gabrielle Chanel. When she was a singer in the bar, um, her stage name was Coco. The interior of the back is in a burgundy color and the burgundy color was inspired by her uniform at the orphanage. And it has a hidden zipper compartment on the interior of the back. And the story behind that hidden pocket is that she created that pocket to hide her love letters. So the 255 was the very first bag created by Chanel. Later on in 2005, Karl Lagerfeld reintroduced the 255 and he named it the reissue. Anything prior to 2005 would be the original that was created by Coco Chanel, the 255 version. And then anything after 2005, it's called the reissue. But I don't think there's any key differences in the 255 or the reissue. And the fourth brand that we're gonna talk about is Dior. Dior is considered the youngest, standing in line between the elite brands like Chanel, Hermes, Louis Vuitton. 
Dior was established in 1946 by Christian Dior. With only two months after the launch of his brand, he did a um, spring and summer haute couture collection. And that's how he stamped his name in history. His fashion is very revolutionary and it gains attention across the globe. The brand focused on elegance, femininity, sophistication. When Christian Dior passed away, Yves Saint Laurent, who was the designer's head assistant, was appointed to be the new artistic director of the fashion house. But that didn't last very long because Yves Saint Laurent has a different approach to fashion versus the culture of Christian Dior. In 1981, the house was acquired by Bernard Arnault. When it comes to handbags, Dior is a fairly new player. Dior releases its first handbag in 1995. Yeah, very, very new. And back then, when they first released it, they didn't really have an official name. It has a nickname that called Choo Choo, and that means uh, favorite in French. The bag was gifted to Lady Diana by the First Lady of France um, on her trip to Paris. And then Princess Diana went on to carry the bag everywhere with her to many royal events. So much that it caught a lot of attention and it gained worldwide recognition. Dior then named the bag Lady Dior. And here is the Lady Dior. The bag became such an iconic symbol. It is very classic and it has like a clear architectural lines. And this bag pay homage to the element of the house. The charms are reflective of the lucky charm that Christian Dior always carry around with him. And obviously we have the Carnish pattern here, which is the brand's motif. In the early years, Christian Dior would host his fashion show where the guests would view his collection by sitting on Napoleon III style cane chair. The chair composed of wood and cane weapon. The Dior iconic carnage was later created in the image of the classic rattan weave serving as a reflection of the brand's legendary beginnings. So that's where the carnage motifs came about. Even though Christian Dior is a little bit younger than Hermes and Louis Vuitton, but it made such an impact on the fashion history. This bag is really old. It is my first ever designer handbag, so it is quite special to me. I have the same initial as Christian Dior, so another reason for me to love this brand. I think it was 17 years ago when I was looking into getting my first designer handbag. Obviously, like Chanel was one of the popular one, Louis Vuitton, but I didn't think I could afford Chanel because Chanel was more expensive, right? And I did not love the monogram from Louis Vuitton back then. Now I do, but in my early 20s, I did not care for the Louis Vuitton monogram print. And I just thought that this bag was very different because you know, 17 years ago, it's a long time ago, but I remember not seeing anything like this. The structure, the shape of the back is quite unique. It is a square back and it's very elegant. It's very ladylike, which is kind of the aesthetic that I was looking for. My first hand back, I saved an entire year to get this back. And back then, I think I paid like less than 1600, like 1500 ish around there for this bag. And I think today it costs over $6,000 for the medium. And this is the medium size. Everything has gone up a lot, but I am so happy that I got this bag. It's still one of my favorite bags, even though I don't carry this one as much as I want to because it's very delicate. It's lambskin and I have some marks on here already, but it's, it's so old that it's expected for it to have some kind of wear and tears. Since then, the brand has created a lot of variation of the Lady Dior. But yes, the first bag created by Dior and also my first designer handbag. So yeah, very special. The fifth brand that we're gonna discuss today is Goyard. I don't think I talk enough about Goyard in this channel and I'm about to change that. The house dated back in 1792 by the founder Pierre Francois Martin. So it was Maison Martin in the beginning. And then in 1853, Francois Goyard took over and that's when he changed the name to Maison Goyard. So 1853 was when Goyard officially established. So Goyard is a French brand and its focus was on trunk and travel leather goods. 
Later on, Francois handed the company over to his son, Edmund Goyard. When Edmund Goyard took over the, the house, he created the Goyardin canvas. And the Goyardin canvas is the canvas that Goyard uses today in most of their products. And it is a canvas that we all love. The Goyard's monogram print is the most recognizable thing about the brand. The history that goes behind this print is a bit different compared to most of the other luxury brands. Um, the print of the Goyard brand is the inner lock in white. The monogram print on the canvas is inspired by the family name. But typically, like most brands would use the first letter of their first name or last name. Goyard, however, use the central leather of the family's name. So the Y is the central leather of the Goyard's family name. So these dots right here that constructed the monogram here are a symbol of the Goyard family history as log drivers. Right here, you would see um, on all of the canvas, you know how painters, they would sign their painting? Right here, Edmund Goyard signed his canvas. So you would see right here, E. Goyard. So that's his signature on the canvas. And then right here, is the address of the flagship store. So that makes up the top part of the Y. And then right here it has Paris on each side. This signature is on all of their canvases. So the brand started out by making trunk and travel leather goods. However, with the changes in social needs, with less people using trunk, uh, the company adapt to the changes and start making luxury handbags and soft-sided luggage option. Uh, so the first handbag was introduced in 1913 and it was the Goyard St. Louis bag. And the Goyard St. Louis bag is one of the most, if not the most popular bag from Goyard. It is ideal for like shoulder bag, travel bag. It doesn't have any structure. It's really soft and very spacious on the inside. Very similar to um, the Neverfull. But I feel like the canvas from Goyard, it's a little bit softer and it's also lighter too compared to the Louis Vuitton canvases. And the Goyard canvas has coating to be waterproof uh, and scratch resistant. Goyard is very elusive and very discreet. It's probably one of the most mysterious luxury brand. The brand doesn't advertise, it doesn't sell anything online. When you go onto their website, um, you can pull up information about the brand, the bags. However, you cannot buy anything online. They absolutely don't sell anything online and they don't even show the prices either. You can only buy them in person. They don't advertise product launch. They don't have fashion shows or anything. Um, they don't do any like crazy advertisement, social media or anything like that. They are very discreet and they don't have that many stores either. They only have about a total of 35 store in the entire world. In the US, there's only six store, New York, Chicago, Miami, um, San Francisco, and Beverly Hills. If you're a fan of Goyard and you live in those uh, places, then consider yourself lucky. Otherwise, you can only buy them when you travel to those places. In Paris, they have a couple locations. The flagship store is probably the most popular store in Paris. And every single time that I go there, the line is about two hours. So you would have to be very patient. You have to allocate like a lot of time to go shopping when you're in Paris because just the wait to get in the store is at least an hour and 30 minutes or two hours. With Goyard, I've never tried this before, but uh, you can pretty much custom make anything you want um, as long as you have the money for it, of course. So that is a little bit of everything about the history of each of these brands uh, from Hermes, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Dior, and Goyard. And also the first handbag ever made from each of these brands. I only did five brands today because these are some of my favorite brands. Of course, there are more brands that I am also a fan of, but I just want to start out with these five brands. If there's any brands that you guys are interested in, uh, let me know in the comment and then I can make another video like this. Otherwise, this is everything for today's video. Again, I really hope that you enjoy. And of course, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye now.